Hi all, this is Valdemar from Better Your Chess. In this video we're going to take a look at a tournament game that was played by one of my students called Dolrish. He's also a member on Chess.com. I decided to discuss this game because it heavily features one of the most important topics in chess, the counterattack. The counterattack can be a great offensive weapon as we shall see in this game. My student is playing with the white pieces and he opens with one e4. There follows e5, knight f3, knight c6, and after bishop b5 we have the Spanish game or Rui Lopez. a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castles, and now we've come to the first main crossroads in the Spanish game. Here black opts for knight xc4 and with that move we enter the realms of the open Spanish game. By removing the e4 pawn black is opening up the e-file and also moving the same piece twice. So naturally there is some risk involved. Hence it is slightly less popular than the closed Spanish game with bishop e7 on the fifth move. But also some of the variations are quite tactical and forcing in nature. So whoever has studied the opening well will have a benefit navigating the complications. My student now continues with rook e1. And this is not the main line, but it is perfectly playable. White is immediately making use of the semi-open e-file, from where he is eyeing no less than three black pieces. The knight on e4, the pawn on e5, and of course at the rear end of the e-file, the king on e8. Okay, so let's quickly return and then see what is the main line. The main line starts here with d4 which also tries to open up the e-file by exchanging these two center pawns. But now after b5, bishop b3, d5, d takes e5, bishop e6, we have another type of uh, structure and normally black is fine under these uh, circumstances. Okay, back to the game where my student played rook e1. And now black commits the first mistake of the game. He plays here d5. Now, tactical weaknesses, such as the knight on e4, they normally need to be addressed as quickly as possible. But with this move, black is protecting his knight, but not removing it from the dangerous e-file. Next to that, black also is putting his knight on c6 into an absolute pin. Now, white must be able to get some advantage out of these circumstances. And I have the feeling that Black was surprised by White's sixth move, leading him to play an inferior move at this precise moment. In the following phase, however, he still manages to deploy some of the ideas of the open Spanish game, who are very much, uh, or which are very much counterattacking in nature. Now, this leads me to believe that Black has probably played or studied these types of positions before. Okay, so if d5 is a mistake, then what is the correct move to play here? After rook e1, let's take a look. The correct move to play here is knight c5. Now this gets the knight out of harm's way on the e-file, but also counterattacks, and I will stress these words, it also counterattacks white's bishop on a4. Now the counterattack is a very important principle in chess. Very, very often it is the best method of defense. But somehow many chess players haven't learned that, or if they have, they don't look for it in the first place when actually playing a game of chess. Okay, now harmless for black would be knight takes e5, knight takes e5, rook takes e5, bishop e7. Now the bishop on a4 is attacked. When after bishop b3 and castles, black is even a little bit better. So the way to go for white after the correct knight c5 would be to play bishop takes c6. And then after d takes c6 to play knight takes c5. Threatening a discovered attack along the e-file. So black blocks that with bishop e7. And now after d4, knight e6, 
bishop e3 white has a very slight pull true black has the pair of the bishops but white has more space in the center also for the moment black's pieces are a little bit clogged up and i think white will be able uh, to somehow finish his development in a very nice way and be able to more effectively move his pieces towards uh, the king set the king side where he might be able to uh, start an attack okay um well back to the game where after 6 d5 white now has to play very accurately in order to get an advantageous position my student played here knight takes e5 now this continuation may look strong at first sight but at second we see that it allows for yet another counter-attack and also and please note this very carefully it also weakens the defense of white's king side most notably h2 and h4 now in chess it is always important to understand what has changed in the position after your opponent's move but also what will change after the move that you are about to play yourself okay now we will continue with uh, the game uh, in, a, in a moment but let's take a look at some other possibilities um, that were uh, better possibilities for white here slightly better would have been d3 even though this would not be sufficient for clear advantage because after d3 black again has a counter attacking move with b5 excluding the bishop's influence over the e5 square and now after d takes e5 he again has a counter attacking move with d takes e5 and this move comes to the rescue because with this move black first resolves the situation in the in the center the, the, the tension between the d5 pawn and the e4 pawn but simultaneously keeps attacking two of white's pieces because let's not forget this guy is on pre and this guy is on pre right and if black does not play the in-between d takes e4 but rather plays b takes a4 then now it is white who executes the capture in the center with e takes d4 um, thereby advantageously resolving the tension and after knight e7 and knight takes e5 black cannot really regain the pawn because after queen takes e5 and a trade of queens on d5 there is the discovered check with knight g6 winning material so to finish up the other line after d takes e4 the in between d takes e4 is clearly strongest and now the game could continue with a, tree, a queen trade but after rook takes e4 and now recapturing the piece on a4 knight takes e5 bishop f5 i consider the game to be balanced so therefore insufficient for a clear advantage would be the move d3 here this move after d5 well having studied that let's take a look at what would have been the correct move for white to play here the correct move would have been to play bishop takes c6 check exclamation mark now this move uses the bishop before it can be counter-attacked with b5 and shut out of the game now normally we don't just trade a bishop for a knight but here the move starts a forcing sequence aimed at getting an advantage they say there are two kinds of trades you have good ones and you have forced ones now here the trade is a good one and the direct result of it is of course a weakening of the e5 square by eliminating its defender on c6 so the game could continue with b takes c6 and now d3 another fine move opening up the e file for the rook on e1 as well as chasing back the knight from the center from where it was attacking the weakness on f2 and now after knight f6 knight takes e5 
white no longer has to worry about a queen coming to h4 because the knight on f6 is blocking that. And he now, in a safe way, without allowing counterattacks, starts to reap the fruits of black's mistake on the sixth move. Of course, now the threat is to give a discovered check, so black must block the e-file. And after, let's say, um, bishop e6, and knight takes c6, white is up a pawn, and he also has the more active position. Okay, so that's what white should have played. Bishop takes c6 on the seventh move. But let's return to um, the move that was played in the game, namely knight takes e5. And a quick reminder, this continuation may look strong at first sight, but at second we see that it allows for a counterattack and also weakens the defense of white's king side, most notably h2 and h4. Black now continued with bishop d6, very coolly played, simply ignoring the double attack on his knight on c6, but rather counter-attacking the knight on e5, and thereby maintaining the balance in the game. Now, in the game, uh, my student played knight takes c6, but this move allows an immediate draw. If white wants to, he can play for the win with, let's say, bishop takes c6 again, and then after b takes c6, d4, bolstering the knight on e5 and thereby blocking the b8, h2 diagonal. But that's not what he played. Instead, he played knight takes c6, but here again comes a counterattack. Bishop takes h2, check. And again, this is the only move to maintain the balance. Now, it would be a mistake to simply recapture here on, on c6, because then after bishop takes c6, check, and bishop d7, and bishop takes c5, now the counterattack with bishop takes h2, check, no longer works, because the knight on e4 has uh, become unprotected. And we can see the consequence after, for instance, king h1, when the normal follow-up would be queen h4, but in this case that is clearly impossible because rook takes e4 now wins the queen. That knight on e4 was no longer protected by the pawn on d5. So back to the game where after knight takes c6, black played the immediate bishop takes h2, which is correct. Now white played king f1 here. And just take a look at the nature of this move. I believe this move is a mistake because it is simply too compliant. Sure, it does get out of check and you have to comply to the rules of the game. You cannot make any illegal moves. But unfortunately, this king move does not do anything else for white's position than just getting out of check. In fact, he's now risking a losing position because black can bring in his strongest attacking piece, the queen, with tempo. Necessary, instead of king f1, was king takes h2. Now, at least this takes a piece and is, how to say, uh, proving the pudding by eating it. But after queen h4 and king g1, we would see a draw by repetition king h2, queen h4, etc, etc. But objectively speaking, this was uh, the way to go for white. Because after the move in the game, king f1, he is risking a losing position. And now, black should and could have played queen h4, continuing the counter-attack and still ignoring the battery of bishop a4 and knight c6. Um, but ensuring himself a dangerous initiative. Of course, now there is a, a mate threatened on f2. And let's say if white brings up the queen to protect with queen f3, then castles now simply threatens to take on c6, because if white would recapture on c6, it would no longer be with the check. So now the knight on c6, well, really has to move. It is en prix. But after, let's say, knight d4, Bishop e5 is a very strong move. This move is now attacking the knight, 
but it is also threatening bishop g4 from where it would be taking away one of the escape squares for white's king and therefore also setting up a mating threat with queen h1 so in this position after bishop e5 um, black would, uh, would be clearly uh, losing another option after queen h4 would be maybe to simply uh, since white is up a piece temporarily maybe just to uh, sacrifice back some material with let's say rook takes e4 but then after d takes a4 and now knight a7 in order to take the bishop on c8 b5 knight takes c8 it turns out that after b takes a4 white's knight is still in a predicament it will be caught on the next move and well with black only one move away from castling he would be uh, up basically the exchange and uh, of course he still has an aggressive stance on the king side as well so here i also consider black's position to be winning so all this could and should have been the consequence of nine queen h4 but instead of queen h4 black after king f1 played the amazing and inexplicable howler bishop d7 so far he has played a good game with some nice counterattacks but now he makes this inexplicable blunder he obviously did not perform a blunder check checking all the moves normally this is what you do that come uh, that could come towards his position when visualizing his own move that he was about to make so the trick here is that before you play bishop d7 if you are considering that then at least and let's see if we can just turn around the board for a moment there at least you try and visualize that move and let's say we execute it now on the board and visualize it so to speak before our mind's eye then you would check all the moves coming towards you and i don't really know um, but this is of course a hack of, of a move that is coming towards you right okay well obviously my student played knight takes d8 ouch that is a queen thank you very very much now I will not show you the rest of the game because that's not really relevant for the theme that I was discussing, the theme of counterattacks most notably. But you can find the rest of the game in the interactive diagram accompanying this video. White went on to win the game without uh, too much trouble. And well, to sum it up, I guess the morale of this game is one, to always look for counterattacks when you are being attacked. Because they normally allow you to stand your ground rather than to give it up and comply uh, with your opponent's plans. And two, to come prepared and study these sharp opening lines, or any sharp opening for that method that you want to play at home, before you play it in a serious game, when it is very difficult to find all the tactical nuances over the board. And three, last but not least, before you move try to figure out what will change in the position after the move that you're about to make but also when visualizing the move before your mind's eye always perform the so-called blunder check so at least try and check all the aggressive moves that come towards your position or that aim to jump on your half of the board or that aim to take something on your half of the board well, with that we've come to the end of this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please consider liking, commenting or subscribing to the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.